In this episode, I talk with Rebecca Gill about WordPress, SEO, and how to get your course ranked at the top of Google. Welcome to the Online Course Coach Podcast, brought to you by TrueFocusMedia.com. Whether you're a beginner or expert, this is the podcast for the latest in online course creation tips, news, interviews, and ideas. And here's your coach, Jeff Long. Welcome back to another episode of the Online Course Coach Podcast. And this really is the No Hype Podcast, where we talk honestly about effective online course strategy. So that might be from the course planning stage or the creation stage all the way through marketing. Any, anywhere in between, we talk about those helpful strategies that will help you build your platform, your influence, your course, and your income. But we don't do it in a hypey way. And so I'm really excited about today's podcast because we talk about something that can really be uh, overly hyped can be scammed, you know, you can easily be scammed and lose money. And we're talking about SEO or search engine optimization. So how do you get to the top of Google? How does your course, your website, even your blog, get to the top of Google? Well, today we have one of the industry experts with Rebecca Gill, and she has been doing this a long time. So we talk about WordPress, SEO, and really how to get that course ranked higher in Google. And you know what? It might be easier than you think. But before we get into that, I want to talk about the resources page on my website. So you, if you go to onlinecoursecoach.com forward slash resources, you can find a lot of the resources that I've mentioned in my podcast or my Facebook live videos. So instead of, you know, trying to search for those, you can go directly to the resources page, find what you need and get it quickly. Or you can sign up for all of them if you want. Uh, but you can easily find the ones that uh, will help you the most get you what you need. So again, go to onlinecoursecoach.com forward slash resources to check those out. Hey, I really want to give a shout out to uh, some people here in the next few podcasts. So this first one is from Jamie Sling, and he left a rating and review on iTunes. And he said, I am not proud of the fact that I am not a excuse me, I am not proud of the fact that I am not a techie guy at all, and that is why I love learning from Jeff. Jeff is a gifted teacher, and I always love learning from him. So, Jamie, thank you so much for leaving that rating and review on iTunes. And for anybody else that would uh, love to give me a rating and a review, I would be honored, and it helps us podcast go higher in the rankings so more people can learn and grow with their course. You can go to online coursecoach.com forward slash iTunes to leave that rating and review. Now, before we get into the interview with Rebecca, this podcast is sponsored by Easy Video for Courses. I've said this before, but online courses that include video are 83% more effective in helping students remember the information better. So if you're not using video or if you're not using effective video, or if it's boring video, your courses won't be effective. We can talk about marketing and planning and doing all that stuff, but really, if you want to create uh, raving fans and students that will promote your course, you really need effective course videos. Well, let's be honest. Course videos are hard, right? There's complicated software. There's not knowing what equipment to buy. You don't want to waste money or spend too much money. And then do you, do you have to be in front of the camera, you know, uh, most people don't feel comfortable or confident in front of the camera, me included. And that's why I created Easy Video for Courses. I've taken all the confusion out of the process so you can make effective course videos in half the time, even if you don't like being on camera. So I tell you what equipment to consider buying, whether it's free, cheap, or expensive, what software you might want to use to edit videos, free, cheap, or expensive, because let's face it, uh, if you don't have a huge budget, I want to give you tools and resources for a small budget. And then we have different uh, lessons on how to make videos with your iPhone or tablet. You know, you don't need necessarily to buy an expensive camera. You can buy your, you can use, excuse me, your smartphone or tablet. And then I go over different strategies to feel confident in front of the camera 
And you can use those same strategies to feel confident behind the microphone. You know, so maybe your courses are primarily uh, screen capture uh, uh, videos. You can feel confident behind the microphone teaching effectively no matter what type of video you're creating. I even give different screen capture software uh, tips and tricks and which ones to buy and how to use it. So that course is jam-packed. So go to easyvideoforcourses.com where you can learn more about the course, see if it's right for you, and buy it today. Now, today we are talking about WordPress and SEO. And so before we get into the interview, I want to define some things because Rebecca and I talk about Yoast. That's Y-O-A-S-T. Uh, Yoast SEO is a plugin, one of the best plugins you can install on your WordPress website. It's free and it's fantastic. And so we talk about uh, Yoast. Um, we talk about, you know, some different hosting. We talk about WordCamps, you know, so that's a conference where you can attend, it's very affordable. Uh, I almost wanna say cheap, but it's very affordable. Uh, you can learn from the pros. I've spoken uh, at several pod, uh, excuse me, several word camps. I've been on the planning committee of several as well, and I love word camps myself. Oh, and then also while it's on my mind, um, there, there are some resources on the online coursecoach.com slash resources page that deal directly with WordPress. So if you want to learn more, about WordPress, the best themes, the best plugins, the best hosting, and all that stuff for your learning management system, for your website, for your courses, go to onlinecoursecoach.com forward slash resources, and there is a uh, bonus guide for you. So it's called Learn the Best WordPress Themes, Plugins, Hosting, and Online Course Plugins, and you can download that guide for free, of course. All right, well, hey, let's jump into the interview, and today I'm talking with Rebecca Gill. She has a well-rounded business background of over 20 years of experience in sales and online marketing. In addition to running the day-to-day -day activities of her company, Web Savvy Marketing, Rebecca also provides full-service SEO consulting, one-on-one -on -one SEO coaching, publishes online SEO courses, hosts a weekly SEO podcast, and teaches online SEO pod, uh, boot camps. She loves to teach the latest SEO strategies and helps businesses grow their online footprint. So, Rebecca, thanks so much for being on the Online Course Coach podcast today. Oh, thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. So, tell me, how did you get started with WordPress? So, I, I met WordPress in Joomla around the same time frame. It was when I was at my old job um, and we were going to revamp the website. And do we did the website in Joomla, we did the blog in WordPress. And when I left the organization and I started my own SEO consulting company, I wanted to really, you know, help people succeed. And I found out that most people did not have websites they could actually edit and they, had no control over it. And I needed to find a solution so that, you know, we could build out those websites for them so we could work on the SEO. And in doing so, I fell more and more and more in love with WordPress and less and less with Joomla. And I, that was back in 2009. And I've been a WordPress cheerleader ever since. That's great. You know, that's almost the exact same story I had was, you know, uh, Joomla and WordPress were kind of going neck and neck and trying to compare to see what would be best for clients. And as we dove into WordPress, it was like, wow, this is way easier than Joomla. You know, why would we go the other direction? So Yeah, and it um, didn't freak people out nearly as much. Joomla seemed to freak end users out a lot, where WordPress was less intimidating. Yeah. Now, what would you say in a nutshell or in a summary are some of your maybe favorite aspects about WordPress? I love that it is so adaptable. So it can service a blogger who's just starting out and is not really, um, you know, well versed on technology. And it can scale all the way up to the enterprise, and it can build out, you know, completely amazing platforms with some customizations to it. And I think that that is just, uh, it, it's it's just kind of magical. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now I talk with a lot of course creators, obviously, and. And we talk about, you know, how do you put your course online? And so generally there's you know, two directions. You can do it through WordPress or with a, like a software as a service, like a Teachable or, or some of the other many platforms. So, uh, and, and I always say, you know, WordPress isn't the only option. Sometimes it's the best option. But why would you say a, 
a course creator might think about using WordPress to house and deliver their course, their e-learning program? I am a firm believer in owning and controlling your destiny, and that includes your digital destiny. Uh, you know, it, like Facebook, right? So I say that you don't actually own a Facebook page. Facebook owns a URL with your name on it, mm -hmm. right? You're not owning that destiny. And when you're putting like your course and third party solutions, that gives me pause because I don't really have as much control as I would like. Um, where WordPress, I do get to control my destiny. I do have, you know, a, a, a open source project that is that is managed by a community. I have wonderful plugins like LearnDash that I can add into it, and you know, and really just have all of this functionality. Yet it's still within my control, and I don't need to worry about it shutting down or you know, hefty fees arriving that I wasn't expected, that kind of thing. And that's why I do think WordPress makes an excellent opportunity for people wanting to get into courses or have fears like that, that control, those control issues that I do, <laughs> you know, it allows them to really get their feet wet and see if it is like a, you know, if, if courses are a great solution for them. Yeah. Yeah. That's so good. Now I know that your specialty is with SEO. So tell me, how did you go from maybe first getting introduced to WordPress to SEO? So my, I actually knew SEO well before I knew WordPress. Um, I've been doing SEO for over 15 years and sales and marketing longer than that. Um, and, you know, and I, I'm self-taught in SEO and it was just, just because we had a wonderful product, we could close if we, you know, if we got in the door with a product, we could close 90% of the time, but we didn't have any leads. So I had to teach myself SEO to get us those leads and be able to fill that sales funnel. Um, and, and WordPress was just a really a, a means for me to get to that SEO end. You know, it was, it was a wonderful tool, especially when I add in plugins like Yoast and, um, you know, some schema related activity. It just really allows me to maximize the work that we do with SEO. And that's really how um, I've, you know, I found WordPress and I fell in love with WordPress. Yeah. Now, Give us some background. You know, I, I have a lot of people that ask me, as I'm sure they ask you, like, hey, I have a, a product or a course or just a website. Hey, I want that number one in Google. Like, <laughs> is that possible? How does that become possible? You know, what are some of the considerations that somebody should think about with search engine optimization? So SEO is is something anybody can do. It's not a matter of whether you can learn SEO or you can be successful at SEO. It's a matter of whether you just want to spend your time, you know, learning the nuances of it and the process and then the time to nurture it because SEO isn't a race. It's a, it's a journey. And, you know, it's, there's not like a destination that you're going to get to fast. It's something that you work on over time, but it is possible to get to number one. I mean, in my old world, when I was learning SEO, I was a small little company in Toledo, Ohio, and I was competing against SAP and Oracle and Microsoft. You know, those were big guys with just huge marketing teams that spent millions of dollars on SEO and, and that marketing department. And yet I could beat them in search and I could get higher than them in ranking because I was doing things smarter and better. And it was just, it was a much more concise process for me that was, again, I come back to the control issues that I controlled as opposed to this, you know, this large company that was dispersed and, you know, not like strong organization with a, with a champion of SEO. And that's how you can easily win against those other people. And, and, and it can be fearful. You know, people can think that they can't really um, excel in it, but you can. And that's why if, 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 if you're listening to this podcast and you take one takeaway, it's that you can beat whoever else is sitting on page one if you do things the right way and if you do it with good intentions and if you apply yourself and, you know, put that work forward. I love it. I love it. So what would be maybe some simple strategies or techniques that people can actually do to help boost their SEO? The first thing that I always recommend people do, and it's that I do it for myself and for my clients is before you even jump in with anything, come bring it back to your target market, bring it back to who do you serve, you know, what do you know about them? What are their needs? What are they are challenged with? And how do you help them? Right. Because as long as there is um, a search box on Google and people have problems, they're going to be connecting via that 
service because that's what people do is they go to Google to look for answers to their problems. And that's the heart of SEO. And that's what people need to start with. Most people go and they jump way ahead to whip in a plugin in into WordPress and thinking that that's going to be the magical, you know, button that's going to make everything happen. But it's not. There's actually a process and it starts back with just, you know, fundamentals of marketing. Who are you? What do you do? And who do you serve? And how can you help them? And then you you, know, you start with that foundation and you build that up with an SEO process of k- keyword research and mapping those keywords to content and optimizing content for the you know specific keywords. Um, you know that's the process and 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 it, it it works. There's no question about it. It works. It's just a matter of getting yourself into the right process and making sure your process starts with your ultimate customer. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you're like me, Rebecca. I get emails all the time from people from all over the world that promise that they can get me to the top of Google. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm kind of being facetious here. What, what, should I, what should the average person look out for with people that are pitching any SEO service, no matter what country they're from? You know, are they all scammers? Are they all good? Like, How does one, uh, if they want to pick somebody to help them with SEO, what are the considerations there? Well, the first thing I would say is quality SEO people are not spamming you an email because guess what? They're already ranking for keywords and businesses coming to them, right? I've never sent an email out trolling for for SEO business. And the other thing about those emails is they promise you the world. They don't tell you typically what they're going to do. It's really low money. And that's not how SEO works. You know, SEO isn't something that you just sign up for a retainer and your SEO consultant is going to magically do everything for you. It is a partnership. You know, they don't know your target demographic like you do. They don't know all of the things that make you wonderful and special and how you can help your target demographic. And you have to be um, part of that process with them to really make sure that you're you're working together to solve those problems, right? And and so if you have a consultant who's who's pitching you, you need to make sure that they are asking you the right questions. You know, because if they're not asking you questions and they're not being very transparent with the process you're going to go through and the work that's involved, be suspect and run away and run away fast. Yeah, that's so good. Now, this whole world of SEO for the for the normal person, right? Not the maybe kind of putting maybe both of us in this camp kind of we're maybe nerds or more technical, right? Uh, for, but for the normal person, SEO might seem overwhelming. So what, you know, is it is it primarily a blogging strategy, like a, a content strategy or what what are some things that like a normal person can do that's not overwhelming or feel like they have to learn HTML or some code or something? Is it attainable for the average person? It is totally attainable. I mean, if I can teach myself SEO and I wasn't a nerd before, right? I (laughs) fell in love with technology once I got out of college, but I came from a small town. I didn't have a home computer when I was little. My degree was in accounting, you know, and, and, and it's, and if I can do it, I would say that anybody can do it. It is obtainable, but it does take work. Right. And it's like my, the, I have a, my SEO course, my main one that teaches you my process is eight hours. And that doesn't even include the homework that you have to do. And, you know, it's got a lot of lessons and a lot of topics. I think there's like 60 lessons and topics in total, but that's because it isn't as fast as people think. It's not something that you do for a week. It's something that you have to execute over months and continue to nurture for it to be really successful. But if you are willing to learn it and buy in, It is absolutely possible and anybody can do it. That's good. That's good. So tell me, why did you get, we're kind of changing gears here, but how or why did you get started with putting your knowledge into courses? I did not plan on doing it. It was, um, I was floating in a pool with Corey Miller from iThemes at (laughs) Cogba Press and we were talking about SEO and I was actually chastising him for something he was doing. And I'm like, you need to do this, this and this. And, you know, you, you need to get into this process. And he was laughing and he's like, you've got so much going on up in your head about this. And, he, you know, and he's like, people need to know this. And I was just kind of like, ah, whatever. And he goes, no, really, people need to know this. You need to build a course. And I was like, huh? And he goes, no, really. He's like, you should build an online course because this is this is not something quick you can teach people, but you could teach people your process. And it's I have been doing, you know, webinars for iThemes and I and there was a following. I was like, well, maybe he's right. And he kept continued to push me on it. 
and and he talked me into it, which is funny that you have to have somebody else talk you into doing something <laughs> good. But he did, you know, and so then I um I, I worked for two really long months building this this eight hour course and we launched I launched it and it was a success and I was like, dang, he was right. I should have listened to him a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. No, I love it. Well, but that's... That, that was my start. My my it just like me being an entrepreneur, I kind of just accidentally stumbled into it. That's good. Well, that's probably how I was first introduced to you. I'm guessing is through the like the iThemes webinars and and I know you've done uh, many over the years. And so it's just interesting, you know, so to the audience, you, you just never know how these relationships will get built, both um, financially as well as just getting to know people, uh, you know. And so it's, it's cool to see, Rebecca, how you and, and Corey have, yeah, uh, teamed up over the years. And he's obviously a great guy as well. Yeah. Relationships are really important. And I remember when I was first doing those webinars with iThemes, my husband's like, why are you wasting your time doing this? Hmm. And I said to him, because just because he's not in the online world, he's in sure. automotive and it's, it works very differently. And I said, you know what? I go, I don't know what's going to come of these, but I'm doing good. And whenever I put myself out there and do good, it comes back tenfold financially. Yeah. And I said, that's all I need to know because it, it, it does feel like the right thing. It's helping people and I know it will come back. And it did without question. Yeah. I've always tried to uh, serve other people, help other people. And yeah, occasionally there's, you know, a, hey, can I serve you with this service, you know, specifically? But um, like when we were, you know, we met at obviously social media marketing world. I mean, I spent two days just kind of helping people, answering questions. You know, I never was like, hey, buy my this or you need to hire me for that. Um, you know, when it happened, it was organic, but, uh, that's, that's what I love is getting to know people, helping them, connecting them with other, uh, people that could, uh, even help and, and, uh, be a good connection as well. Um, so what have you learned through this course creation delivery process? You know, have there, has it been perfection every time or has there been anything that you've, uh, learned throughout the process? Gosh, that's a, that's a good question. Um, I, it's not if you build it, they will come automatically. You have to make sure that you definitely continue to promote whatever you've created. I think that's one of the huge lessons I've had. Um, there is momentum that builds up, right? And people refer other people over to your courses and things like that. But you need to continually do good, give yourself freely, you know, whether it's through your own websites and your own profiles or through other people's um, communities. If, and just continue to put yourself out there and subtly market your product. And that's how it stays, you know, it, it stays active and you continue to bring revenue from it. I think that's one of the biggest lessons I've learned. Um, and I think the other thing is probably there's a lot of different ways to sell your course, right? I use my courses inside masterminds that I six week masterminds that I do. Um, and I'm quite sure that that probably wasn't my idea either, that someone else suggested that I do a mastermind. And I was like, OK, I'll try that out. You know, I, so I think that, that that's another big lesson. And for, for listeners to take away is there's always opportunities out there for sales. Um, and I'm like you, I don't I don't push sales. I just help people uh, and just like keeping your eyes open to those opportunities, because I think you'll be very surprised at how many present themselves and how successful that they can be. So that's interesting. You said that you primarily either uh, market or deliver your courses through your masterminds. Tell me what that looks like. Like how how does that look like for you? How does that look like for the people in the mastermind groups? Yes, yeah, so the masterminds are just one one um, way of selling the courses for me. Um, it you know it's it's I would tell you I don't even know what the percentage is. Maybe like ten percent of the sales or something like that. Um, but so like I have a six week mastermind session and it's limited. Each group will be limited to 10 people and I do them for different courses. Um, and we literally walk through the course together. So the students have access to the online courses. They have assignments before they come to class. So they have to go through specific lessons. They have specific homework that they do before class. Then we get to our group session online we video, um, you know, chat and share screen our desktops. We look at each other's homeworks, um, answer questions. If there's something in particular within their, their lessons that they had that I really want to make sure they get, I will cover it in the live sessions. And then we talk about next steps and we move on to the, you know, to the next phase of the course and our next week together. And the nice part about that is it really helps them stay on track. 
um, in, instead of just like taking a, a couple of lessons, getting sidetracked, they've got this due date in yeah. front of them, right? They have to have their homework done. And so they come to class with their homework. And, and if life has gotten in the way, they come with their head hanging. I'm like, no, no, don't do that. You know, it's okay. <laughs> I'm not going to give you a tardy slip or, you know, put you in detention. I just want to make sure that you have the accountability to get this done so we can help you along the way. Because they have that one-on-one -on -one to ask questions and review that homework, which is really invaluable for them because they get professional feedback on did they get it or did they not get it, you know, with the, what they learned. Are they on track with their process and their their strategy and execution, or are they veering off? Sometimes they veer off, and I've got to bring them back, and and then they say, "Oh my gosh, that makes so much sense." Perfect, um, and that's why they they make a great blend together. Um, and, and you know, because like, a lot of people can't afford me as a one on one consultant because of my hourly rate and my minimum project, but that mastermind gives them that opportunity um, to really be able to have it, but at a much discounted rate. Yeah. And I love that because um, for better, for worse, you know, many um, marketing people that promote courses, you know, kind of promote the sit it and forget it type of thing where you make a course and then people buy it and you don't touch it. And, you know, for some industries that might work, but we're really those high touch courses where you're going through it together. There's that accountability and, you know, it's, it's not easily scalable. I mean, you can obviously do more and more people, but it just, again, builds that relationship. And I love that you're doing that. Yeah, I, I love that. And, you know, and I have that relationship to the mastermind students. And I talk about like when the mastermind's done, I feel like it's summer camp closing and I'm the <laughs> counselor sitting watching all the kids leave. I love it. You know, it's like so sad to me. But so I encourage him to stay in my Facebook group so we can stay connected and I can still answer questions and, you know, kind of <laughs> keep them, keep my, keep all my kids close. I love it. As a, uh, when I was in college, I was a camp, uh, counselor and director for about five summers. So I fully understand that uh, mentality there. That's funny. Um, so what are some of the other best or top strategies you've used in the past to market your courses? So I have a number of different channels, um, you know, obviously SEO and, you know, just bringing people in organically. I use my Facebook group, my private Facebook group called SEO Launchpad. Um, which I spend a lot of time sharing information and giving free advice, but in turn, people will also buy the course. Um, you know, it's, it's, it gets sold in conjunction with my mastermind clients who I, who I'm doing actually like full consulting projects with will also sometimes want the course so that they can go through the course along with the consulting project together. Um, I, you know, I, I promote it through social media and my email marketing list that I have. And then I've also had, um, you know, some technology partners like hosting companies take my course and buy like a 20 seat license and then they're using it for giveaways to their client base, but they're also promoting me as they're doing it. You know, I mean, that's not their intent, but that's what's happening along the way. So I get a double win there because I get their course sales plus their promotion. So yeah. Yeah, again, I think it's like the more marketing channels you can get where, again, you're really, truly helping people, the more better you are, because that is just it's, it, it, it makes the revenue consistent and ongoing because I don't believe in, oh, you can just launch it and you're going to be driving your Ferrari around the beach because <laughs> all of these sales are just going to happen while you sleep. I, I don't believe that. Right. Yeah. I know you're connected with different influencers like uh, Corey Miller and, you know, his wife and some different things. And so that maybe gives you access where some wouldn't, but you know, how, how, well, let me ask you this. How have you built those relationships with influencers? You know, I've met people that in a way, I hate to use this where they target influencers and try to like, you know, buddy, buddy up next to them. Um, you know, and usually people can see through that, but how have yeah. you developed some of those relationships with other influencers? I mean, you are one yourself, but yet it seems like things get easier as you are more, I don't know, um, an influence yourself and partner with other influencers. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So I don't target influencers. I don't ever have a list of people that I that's want good. to become friends with. You know, that's just, that's not me. And honestly, I don't even have time to do that, to yeah. sit and put that much thought into it. Um, I've just have tried to make myself present and be helpful, you know, speak at word camps. I've helped organize word camps. Um, I've, I've, you know, I freely will give webinars to other people's communities if they want. So to, you know, and it's educational webinars, it's not me pitching a product. 
It's me actually providing very detailed information for people, um, you know, at, for free to educate their their market. And, you know, that kind of thing breeds other influencers wanting to connect and and, you know, interact with you. And then and once you validate that, yes, the p- person that you p- you project online or at a conference is truly who you are and you do really, th- you know, the, your core does want to help other people, then those relationships n- seem to naturally form. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that that's the best way because it's it's organic and it's it's real. It's authentic. Yeah. And I'm glad you said that, uh, that it's organic and real and authentic because and I think it, it starts with you or anybody. Uh, in a way, putting yourself out there, you know, you have to be available both in person and online. And, you know, some people that I talk to, it's like they want the the mountaintops of success, but they're not willing to help and serve other people, do the free webinars, like you said, and just serve, you know. Yeah. And the, the funny thing is, is I when I first started getting really active in, in like the WordPress community and things like that, it was... It was not for the reasons that you think. It was, um, I went away to work camp Las Vegas. It was my first away camp. And the only reason I went was because I had just had a scare with cancer and I needed to get the heck out of Dodge. Mm. I just needed to take a step away after going through all of that stress for like two months of testing and just feel normal. Um, and so I went and like, it was Chris Lum was like, you should come to work camp Las Vegas. There's a bunch of us going. And I didn't even really know him yet. And I was mm. like, well, maybe I'll come. And I went and that's where I met Carrie Dills, who's like a super close friend of mine. And I just met a bunch of other people. And then that got me the bug and I wanted to go to additional camps. And then I started speaking and, you know, it kind of just flourished from there out. And it was just taking that step forward when somebody invited you and encouraged you, you know, and, and once I got there, embracing the situation for everything that was there, I embraced it. And, um, and I think that that's you get over that fear, right? As you go yeah. to put yourself out there and expose yourself publicly in whatever shape, form, or manner, is embrace your fear and and channel it into you know deliverables and and whatever drives you. Because I think yeah. that that's what really um, works for people. And then once you do it, you realize this is actually good. <laughs> I'm right. so glad you did it, you know, and, and it's like you go into social media marketing world and actually sitting down and talking and helping people, mm-hmm. you know, once you take that first foot step forward, you realize it's good in so many ways. You enjoy it. They enjoy it. You're helping people. It's growing your business. It's just, you know, there, there's so much good that comes from it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you know, and it's interesting, like at the, at the table we were at, you know, for, for course creators, uh, there are even things I learned you know, from different people and we're all kind of helping each other build our business or brainstorm or, and so I love, um, you know, either local meetups or conferences or, and like you mentioned, word camps, I just want to define that. So WordPress has a, a conference and there's, you know, speakers and different things you can go to. And it's, to me, it's a little different. It's called an unconference because you can kind of just get up and walk out of sessions or you can create your own session in the hallway. And, and it's pretty, uh, pretty cool. I'm on the, the planning committee for uh, their uh, theirs locally in my area as well. It, can I just jump in real quick? Yeah, absolutely. If, you're, if you are listening to this and you've never been to a WordCamp, but you are a WordPress user, please know that that conference, no matter what city it is, is it, it is in, is filled with technical people and non-technical people, absolutely. people who just launched a blog, people who just want to get into WordPress. So don't feel intimidated like you can't go. You will be surprised at the amazing people that you will meet and the things that you will learn. You know, don't have imposter syndrome like you're not good enough to go to a technology conference because like you just said, it's not that type of conference. You know, there's people from all shapes and sizes. There's kids that go. There's kids that will get up and speak at age 12 (laughs) to talk about what they're doing with WordPress. So and that's that's the goal of that type of environment is just really to allow people to connect in whatever. Um, manner is comfortable to them so that we can all move ahead well together. Yeah. Oh, so good. Now you mentioned something that I wasn't planning on talking about, but you said the phrase imposter syndrome. And I have to ask you, how would you define that? And then how of, you know, how do you or other people maybe struggle with that uh, imposter syndrome? 
I have imposter syndrome. I think most of us do. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, you know, I grew up poor in a little town in northern Michigan. I was like, I, I was a ward of the state on um, public assistance. In my head, I am still the kid on the basketball team who doesn't know the rules and has the dirtiest shoes because she can't afford the right ones. Yeah. Right. That is my imposter syndrome. When I go to speak at a conference, I still have that. When I go to do an online summit, I overproduce content, whether it's a course or it's a, it's a webinar, I overproduce because I'm fearful that people are not going to feel like they got value and which is never the case, you know, <laughs> so we all have it. And I think what you just have to do is you really just have to say, you have to own it and be like, okay, I am still that little kid in the dirty tennis shoes, but guess what? I do tend to have a crown on my head and, and I have my own. You know, I have I have different things now that make me special, even though that that part of me back then still exists. It does help drive me um, and I just accept it and I move on. I, honestly, it's just I that's because I, I know it's never going to leave me and I don't look at that imposter syndrome as a bad thing. I use it as that keeps me grounded and that keeps me focused on what really matters. That's so good. A, a couple, I think it was two years ago at the Dayton Word Camp, uh, there was a panel discussion on that very topic. And I know for so many people that was life changing because we all feel it, you know, we all, we all feel not good enough or smart enough or whatever. And to realize that, wow, other people think that too, you know, it, it, and, and it's eye opening. We do. We do. And like, and, and people have it with SEO. They're like, oh, well, I could never compete with that company. <laughs> Nobody would ever want to get my stuff. I'm like, really? Have you ever heard of a company called Yoast? They're like, they start laughing. I'm like, you know, they have their own courses. But somehow some people still want to buy my courses. Mm, sure. I mean, I could have huge imposter syndrome because they, you know, they're great. They know SEO. They create a wonderful product. They've got courses. And I could say, oh, well, no one's ever going to buy my course because there's all these other people out there. But but they do because they resonate with me and my teaching style and how I approach SEO and how I want to help them. Right. And I think that we just all have to, uh, like I said, own it and just, you know, channel it in so we can use it for our own benefit. Yeah. Steve Jobs has this really fascinating interview, I, I believe it was from the 80s, where he talks about uh, life really changed for him when he learned that he could, he talks about the uh, example of like poking a box, I'm not sure why, but he says, you know, I, when I learned I could kind of poke this thing and it would change or it would uh, modify or, or it would do something, and I had the power to kind of make that change. And he talks about how he's like, other people aren't better than me or worse than me. Like we all have this power to help other people and influence and change. And I just love his, his talk. I'll put that in the show notes uh, for the listeners because, you know, for me, yeah, it's easy to think, oh, that person, they're so much smarter than me or better or seasoned or whatever. And they might be, but we still have the opportunity to influence uh, our um, area of, of expertise or, or people that are listening to us, however large or small that might be. Absolutely. I mean, no matter where you came in life and whatever your origin story is, that does not define who you end up becoming and what you do with your life. That is all within your power. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Rebecca, tell me a little bit more about your courses, where we can find them and, and a little bit about each one of them. So my courses are at DIYSEOcourses.com. Um, my main course is for like the foundations of SEO. And um, I take you through the process that I have been using for 15 years. And I've used it across industries, both B2B and B2C. Um, and that's the, that's the core course. And then I have some additional courses. I have one for selling in, and implementing SEO services. And I usually have a mastermind that can go along with that, um, depending on what time of the year it is. Then I have another course for technical SEO. Um, that one just actually launched last week after our summit includes um, both the written course material as well as um, six hours of live video training from the sessions last week. Um, then I've got like a free course for the Google Knowledge Graph. And for the heaven's sakes, there's one more and I'm blanking on what it is. I cannot <laughs> believe that. As funny as that is, I must, it's because I created it a while ago. But <laughs> I try to have, I keep adding courses based on what people are asking for. Like I did not intend or plan on, you know, creating any type of content for the technical SEO, but there are a lot of developers and WordPress implementers, you know, who don't code, but actually, you know, build out the sites for people that said, we don't know what we don't know. 
Yeah. You know, we would really love it if you could just give us some kind of roadmap that said, here's things you should be, you know, cognizant of and, and make sure that you're aware of as you're moving forward with builds and design and things like that. And that's what I try to base the courses on with what I create moving forward. That's good. So where can people, uh, do you have a link? Do you have a discount or do you have a, a website we can go to, to learn more about you and your courses? Yes. So I will um, have ready for when this airs uh, a special link for you guys with, uh, or you, you guys, you gals, um, <laughs> with information and actually a discount code for you. So it's DIYSEOcourses.com slash OCC. And that will write you over to a coupon code that you can use on any of the courses. Just want to make sure that um, um, you get to get a little discount if you want to try out one of the courses and jump into SEO which I hope you do because I love it and I see the benefit it can do with other people. Yeah. Well, Rebecca, I really appreciate you being on, not just to talk about WordPress or SEO, but even the, the more in-depth topics that we've discussed here today. So thanks so much for being on the online Course Coach podcast today. It was my pleasure. I so appreciate you having me. Well, there you go. That was the interview with Rebecca Gill. I hope you walked away with some really good strategies uh, I think it was helpful to have her on because, you know, SEO, like we've talked about, can really be overly hyped. Uh, you can lose money if you pay the wrong company or, or whatever. And so she gave some really good tips and strategies. So please implement those. Don't just listen to this podcast and think, oh, okay, what's my next podcast? But make sure to implement those strategies as you're uh, doing a content marketing strategy or you're adding content or blogs or whatever to your website make sure that you're adding content to your website. So as we close the podcast, don't forget to uh, grab that resource on the best WordPress themes, plugins, hosting, and online course plugins um, at onlinecoursecoach.com forward slash resource. You can download that guide. And I've been using WordPress, oh man, for uh, since 2004, I think. <laughs> kind of lost track. And I, I mean, we've, you know, my, my company has made some very robust websites using WordPress. And so I give all my best um, uh, resources in that guide. So definitely check that out. And lastly, if you're wanting to create effective course videos for your online course, you definitely need to check out Easy Video for Courses. So go to easyvideoforcourses.com and check that out. Well, hey, I hope you have a great week. I hope you are moving forward with your course, whether that's planning your course, building your audience, uh, making your course, or marketing your course. Wherever you are in that spectrum, make sure to do something about it this week. Don't just sit on the sidelines. Don't just listen to this podcast or watch videos or whatever. You know, you're, It's easy to get caught in that trap of analysis paralysis, right? Or is it par paralysis by analysis? There we go. Uh, so don't get into that trap. Make sure you're taking these tips, you're implementing them, and then, hey, I would love to know where you are in the process. So drop me an email uh, message from the uh, contact page there on the website. But uh, keep coming back to the episodes. Keep learning more. I'm going to have quite a few interviews, and honestly, a lot of them I've met at Social Media Marketing World. So uh, go back and listen to that episode about Social Media Marketing World. I don't get paid to promote <laughs> the uh the uh, conference. I just think it's a really good conference. and It'll be fun to hang out with you next year. I've already got my tickets. Uh, so thanks for listening to this episode of the Online Course Coach Podcast, where it's my goal to help you to teach many to impact millions. <laughs>